these girls know that you're posting their images? And, and original poster responded, well, no, iCloud, dot, dot, dot. My name is Einar Otto Stangvik, and I work as a journalist, researcher, security specialist at VG in Norway. I was studying to be a programmer from 2001. The week after starting my studies, I, I got a job as a programmer. Come 2012, I was, without even knowing it, really fed up. Just so tired of selling what I felt was two expensive solutions to made-up problems. I felt the need to do something, something else, more meaningful with my time and apply that for, for something other than just making money for someone. I think in August, September 2012, I read some articles about people, mostly girls, having their accounts broken into, having what eventually turned out to be backups of mobile phones downloaded and, and like personal details stolen from those backups, images, notes, passwords, etc. The person who'd lost her photos was just heartbroken, desperate. She had no idea who'd done it. I guess when I read it, I just figured, well, that, that's too bad. People are mean. The internet is, is nasty. Uh, but then it just stuck with me, so it was really difficult for me to just walk away from that. I started building a set of tools that would monitor certain forums and download specific pieces of image data. If it got a hit from an address linked to Norway, it would download all of the context from the file and send me a push message on my phone. So I got the push message, like many times actually, because many, many, many files were posted to these forums that were, could be linked to Norway, but there was one post in particular that my, got my attention because it had several girls in not like a really explicit situation but, but uh, they were certainly private photos and the context was do these girls know that you're posting their images and, and the, the original poster responded well no iCloud dot dot dot. At this point I, I didn't really have a clear sort of plan, like what do you actually do when you find something. So I contacted the police uh, in, uh, in Oslo and asked like is there someone I can talk to to submit these files and they said no, uh, this, this isn't for us. So I was left and many times later as well in that process with the question is this something that you should like just put down and, and walk away from? Uh, try again and have others deal with or, or like try yourself to do something. I was looking at the mutual friends like between, between uh, uh, these girls and I noticed that maybe 20 people who added up and there was one person who I suspected but f felt sort of bad for suspecting. He was a common friend of the two girls and also had an email address that matched like the recovery email address of, uh, of the hacker's email address. And that was sort of the first clue that pointed to him. And he was at the time living in the same area as the IP address potentially pointed to. And he turned out to be a, a, a politician. And he was also the social media responsible for uh, for the, the Conservative Party in Norway as such. It wasn't really difficult to, to rope in once he got, to got talking. Most people want some sort of confirmation for what they're doing and he said in one of the interrogations that he was never really into this, like sexually, it wasn't, it wasn't about the content, it was about the challenge. I think that made him even more vulnerable to, to roping in based on the feedback because he wanted that confirmation that, oh, you're so clever, you're so, you're this crafty hacker who can hack these poor girls.
so I believe 30, 35. I've seen no mention of exactly how many of those he stole, stole pictures that he posted. But those were the, the girls that he admitted during his interrogations. Might have been more, might have been fewer, but he was sentenced to, to um, some prison time. So he was forced to, to put out a press announcement that, that he was uh, pulling out of politics. These girls were abused, and that has to be recognized. I want them to feel that there are people out there watching them and working to stop what damage they're doing. So how I found what I was missing back in 2012. I think what I've found more than most is that I'm somewhat of a seeker. I'm never fully satisfied. So this is a drive that will keep driving me forever. I just bite on and stay, stay on. It's me or the brick wall. <laughs>